Mass for the seventh Sunday of Easter. Hear us, O Lord, Holy Father, Almighty, everlasting God, and send forth thy holy angel from heaven to guard, cherish, protect, visit, and defend all who dwell in this thy holy house and all who participate in this liturgy. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Hallelujah, Christ is risen. The Lord, the Lord is risen, risen indeed. indeed. Hallelujah. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of thy Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love thee, and worthily magnify thy holy name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Hear what our Lord Jesus Christ saith, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, and with all thy soul, and with all thy mind. This is the first and great commandment, and the second is like unto it. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. Upon these two commands hang all the law and the prophets. Christ is gone before, who liveth 
and reigneth with thee in the same Holy Ghost, one God, world without him. Amen. A reading from Acts. So when they had come together, they asked him, Lord, will you at this time restore the kingdom to Israel? He said to them, It is not for you to know times or seasons which the Father has fixed by his own authority. But you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you shall be my witness in Jerusalem, in all Judea and Samaria, and to the end of the earth. And when he had said this, as they were looking on, he was lifted up, and a cloud took him out of their sight. And while they were gazing into heaven as he went, behold, two men stood by them in white robes and said, Men of Galilee, why do you stand looking into heaven? This Jesus, who was taken up from you into heaven, will come in the same way as you saw him go into heaven. Then they returned to Jerusalem from the mount called Olivet which is near Jerusalem, a Sabbath day's journey away. And when they had entered, they went up to the upper room where they were staying. Peter and John and James and Andrew, Philip and Thomas, Bartholomew and Matthew, James the son of Alphaeus, and Simon the Zealot, and Judas the son of James. All of these with one accord devoted themselves to prayer, together with the women, and Mary, the mother of Jesus, and with his brothers. The word of the Lord. Thanks be God.
A reading from 1 Peter. Beloved, do not be surprised at the fiery ordeal which comes upon you to prove you, as though something strange were happening to you, but rejoice in so far as you share Christ's suffering, that you may also rejoice and be glad when His glory is revealed. If you are reproach for the name of Christ, you are blessed, because the Spirit of glory and of God rest upon you. Humble yourselves, therefore, under the mighty hand of God, that it, in due time He may exalt you. Cast all your anxieties upon Him, for He cares about you. Be sober, be watchful. Your adversary, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion, seeking someone to devour. Resist Him, firm in your faith, knowing that the same experience of suffering is required of your brotherhood throughout the world. And after you have suffered a little while, the God of all grace, who has called you to His eternal glory in Christ, will Himself restore, establish, and strengthen you. To Him be the dominion forever and ever. Amen. The Word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. In the name of God, 
Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Well, this past Thursday was Ascension Day, and we had that reading from the Acts of the Apostles this evening, which we also heard on Ascension Day, of Jesus ascending to heaven to inaugurate his reign. And we know that not this Sunday, but next Sunday is Pentecost, when the Holy Spirit comes upon all the church, and we receive power, and the church is born. Pentecost is traditionally ascribed as the birthday of the church. And so what are we now in between, in these ten days between the ascension of Christ and the coming of the Holy Spirit? These are the labor pains which precede the birth of the church in the Bible, that great Pentecost event. But here we are as well in a day and age in which we're safer at home, sheltering at home, whatever we call it. And we are about to restart public worship in the near future. So there's a different birth process going on and a different labor process going on. Because what happens when birth happens, when rebirth happens? We have new life. And what will that new life look like? What will that new life look like is a question we must ask ourselves and pray about. And so I want to look carefully at what happens in our scripture lessons here. Because we have a verse about receiving power to be Jesus' witnesses in Jerusalem and all Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the world. In witnessing in Jerusalem at their home base, the disciples are home. But we are witnessing to each other in the church that we are called then to reach out into all Judea to those connected with the parish, to better connect with and invite to worship those who we already know. But then we also run into the people who we meet and may be witnesses as well in Samaria to the people in the communities around us with whom we do not presently enjoy a real connection. And then there's the rest of but note, Jesus does not say that we shall have power, but that we shall receive power. Now today, we encounter the same verses about the ascension, and I want to focus on power, on what power is and how power is experienced. The beginning and end of this power is God. In doing God's work and being his witnesses, we shall never accomplish a thing by and through our own talents, insights, and resources. We need to pay closest attention, therefore, to how God's power is manifested in Jesus Christ, the one, the way, the truth, and the life to whom, and by whom, and in whom we witness. When Jesus is speaking with his disciples, preparing them for the fulfillment of God's plan, he speaks of the glory of God. In our gospel lesson, he prays, Father, the hour has come. Glorify your Son so that the Son may glorify you. The hour has come. And what hour is this? To answer this question, let's first go back and look at the times in John's gospel when Jesus' hour is described as not yet come. Jesus first says that his hour has not yet come to his mother when she asks him to help at the wedding feast in Cana because the supply of wine is run out. Twice, Jesus escapes arrest at the temple, stoning him, for his hour had not yet come. And yet, Jesus then recognizes that his hour is come, when again, at the temple, he says, the hour has come for the Son of Man to be glorified. And what hour is this? What event comes about that Jesus knows that the time has come that his glory may be shown in all the world? It is the time when he speaks of his own death, when he washes his disciples' feet and instructs them at the Last Supper, when he gives the disciples a new commandment to love one another, and when he instructs them in the one way to the Father. Up to this point, John has had us follow Jesus' ministry 
as highlighted by miracles, although John calls them signs, not miracles. But now the story switches from signs to glory, to glory that is revealed ultimately on the cross when the dying Savior breathes his last and says, it is finished. It is finished, indeed. The work which the Father has given the Son is finished. But we know that these words are uttered from the mouth of a man dying on the cross. We need, therefore, to pay closest attention to this fact when we ourselves experience the power which we receive from God, the power to be God's witnesses. As Peter admonishes in the epistle, we are to humble ourselves, therefore, under the mighty hand of God, so that he may exalt us in due time. We are to cast all our anxiety on him because he cares for us. It's our anxiety, our need for control. Boy, is that known these days in sheltering in place. <clears throat> our need for control is that we want our will to be done. Give us truth serum, and we're going to say the Lord's Prayer, Thy kingdom come, my will be done. If you really, the truth serum is working. <clears throat> we want to win. We want to triumph over the thorns of life. And yet when Paul prays earnestly and repeatedly to God that his own thorn might be removed, what is it that Jesus replies? My power is made perfect in weakness. And Paul understands. He writes to the Corinthians, I will all the more gladly boast of my weakness that the power of Christ may rest upon me. Paul does not have power he receives power. We do not have power, but we shall receive power, and we shall receive this power when our will is made subject in all things to God's will. What must I do then in order to subject my will to God's will? I must, above all, pray. We have a special opportunity to do this because while we continue to worship virtually, our communion with God is affected especially in prayer. And while we continue to observe safer at home instructions, restrictions, we know that it is in prayer that we can reach out and make the connections that are under threat. In daily prayers, the intention is that we will deepen our friendship with Jesus, bring others to know Jesus, or know him better, and come to know that every aspect of our life is the stuff of prayer. Remember especially while we're apart to pray for each other, to pray for those who suffer from disease and for those who care for them. In the habit and practice of prayer, we come to know that every aspect of life is the stuff of prayer. And what is this stuff? It is all. It is the offering of self. It is the opening and offering of the heart in order that the heart may be filled by God. It is the posture of the heart in which God makes his dwelling within his believers. And when God is present, what power have we received? When God is present, because our lives are prayers as much as our words and thoughts, what power is present? When I pray not to pile up empty words, but to bring forth words that have been given to me by the Spirit, then my will has been replaced by God's will. When as a parish, we are so soaked in prayer that the objects of prayer are offered to us because we are paying attention, what witness to God can we offer? Try this, particularly now that you're home. Whether you're using the prayer book or a resource like the Forward in Faith devotional booklet, whether you tie your prayer to the online resources from the parish, whether you compose yourself in prayer and begin not by thinking about for whom or what you should pray, just ask God. Become weak in order that God may give you power. Ask God. For what? For whom should I pray? When a name comes to you, lift up this name in prayer. Lift the name up, knowing that God knows what is needed in prayer. 
When an outcome or ministry or work comes to you, lift this up in prayer. Do this daily. Be intentional. Do this sacrificially by saying no to something else you want or think you need to do. And you will find that God will begin to use you as a prayer warrior, one who receives his power. In this, you will receive power to witness to God's saving good news. You will receive power to witness to Jesus as the way and the truth and the life. Here in Jerusalem and in all Judea, in Samaria, and with all whom you meet. Thanks be to God. Let us affirm our faith and our same creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten and not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for our sin and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Ghost of the Virgin Mary and was made man and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried, and the third day he rose again according to the scriptures, and ascended into heaven, and sitteth on the right hand of the Father, and he shall come again with glory to judge both the quick and the dead, whose kingdom shall have no end. And I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Lord and giver of life, who proceedeth from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who is saved by the prophets. And I believe one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us pray for the whole state of Christ's church and for the world. <clears throat> Almighty and ever-living God, who in thy holy word has taught us to make prayers and supplications, and to give thanks for all men, receive these our prayers which we offer unto thy divine majesty, beseeching thee to inspire continually the universal church with the spirit of truth, unity, and concord. And grant that all those who do confess thy holy name may agree in the truth of thy holy word and live in unity and godly love. Give grace, O Heavenly Father, to all bishops and other ministers, especially Brian, our ordinary, Jeff, our rector, that they may both by their life and doctrine set forth thy true and lively word and rightly and duly administer thy holy sacraments. And to all thy people give thy heavenly grace, and especially to this congregation here present, that with meek heart and due reverence they may hear and receive thy holy word, truly serving thee in holiness and righteousness all the days of their life. We beseech thee also so to rule the hearts of those who bear the authority of government in this and every land, especially Donald our president, Tate our governor, and Johnny our mayor, that they may be led to wise decisions and right actions for the welfare and peace of the world. Open, O Lord, the eyes of all people to behold thy gracious hand in all thy works, that rejoicing in thy whole creation they may honor thee with their substance and be faithful stewards of thy bounty. And we most humbly beseech thee of thy goodness, O Lord, to comfort and succor all those who in this transitory life are in trouble, narrow, sorrow, need, sickness, or any other adversity. We pray for your handmaids of child, especially Anne Griffin, and give thanks for the safe delivery of Harry Griffin. For Tiffany McElroy, and give thanks for the safe delivery of Amelia Claire McElroy. We pray for Isabel Kate. We pray for those suffering and those who are aged or infirmed for the widowed and orphans, especially Nancy Brand, Paul Brewer, Sylvia Cantu, 
Mary Ann Covington, Billy Joe Deeds, Jordan Downs, Dolores Fleming, Ray Fraser, Michelle Gibson, Hannah Green, Bill Green, Wendy Hazard, Abby Hedrick, Carol Henley, Bill Herson, Cindy Hickson, Laura Hopkins, Pam Ishi, Kevin Jones, Ashley Lewis, Everly May, Harley Miller, Mafi and Tim Mitch, Carol and Luke Mitchell, Laura Palmer, Adrian O'Neill, Kyle Pearson, Sue and Gerald Peavy, Mary Plain, Mike Ray, Gene Sanderson, Christopher Sessoms, Robert Sharp, Doris Smith, Tim Stinson, Warren Strain, Lori Lee Thames, Hayden Thompson, Betty Townsend, Wesley Warner, Francis Warren, Sherman Wellborn, Jerry Wellnitz, Jacob Whitaker, and for those whom we now name. We pray for those celebrating birthdays this week, especially Judy Sarah, Faye Reed, Elizabeth Sullivan, and Mary Wells Williams. We pray for the protection of the men and women of our armed forces at home and abroad, especially Cedric Golden, Will Chard, Danielle Lewis, Barbara McLeod, Stacy Pickering, William Schaffenberg, and Jackson Touchstone. And we also bless thy holy name for all thy servants departed this life in thy faith and fear, especially Eloise McGuire, beseeching thee to grant them continual growth in thy love and service, and grant us grace so to follow the good examples of the ever-blessed Virgin Mary, of St. John our patron, and of all thy saints, that with them we may make partakers of thy heavenly kingdom. Grant these our prayers, O Father, for Jesus Christ's sake our only mediator and advocate. Amen. Amen. Let us humbly confess our sins unto Almighty God. Almighty God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, maker of all things, judge of all men, we acknowledge and bewail our manifold sins and wickedness, which we from time to time most grievously have committed by thought, word, and deed against thy divine majesty, provoking most justly thy wrath and indignation against us. We do earnestly repent and are heartily sorry for these our misdoings. The remembrance of them is grievous unto us. The burden of them is intolerable. Have mercy upon us, have mercy upon us, most merciful Father. For thy Son, our Lord Jesus Christ's sake, forgive us all that is past, and grant that we may ever hereafter serve and please thee in newness of life, to the honor and glory of thy name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who of his great mercy hath promised forgiveness of sins to all those who with heart and repentance and through faith turn unto him. Have mercy upon you, pardon, and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and bring you into everlasting life. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And with thy spirit. spirit. Ascribe to the Lord the honor of his name, bring offerings, and come into his room.
the holy sacrifice of this Mass is offered to the greater glory of God and thanksgiving for his many, many blessings upon our lives. Giving thanks especially this day for the ascension of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ to heaven and to the right hand of God the Father. Special intentions are offered for all faithful Christians and Christian communities in this ascension tide as they pray for the coming of the Holy Spirit. May the Holy Spirit come. May it rest upon us and our communities. May it enlighten our hearts, strengthen our minds, and give us grace and mercy that we may love our Lord more dearly and love one another more truly. And may the souls of all the faithful departed, through the mercy of God, rest in peace. Amen. The Lord be with you.
Wherefore, O Lord and Heavenly Father, according to the institution of thy good beloved Son, our Savior Jesus Christ, we, thy humble servants, who celebrate and make here before thy divine majesty, with these thy holy gifts, which we now offer unto thee, the memorial thy Son hath commanded us to make. Having in remembrance his blessed passion and precious death, his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension, rendering unto thee most hearty thanks for the innumerable benefits which you award unto us by the same. And we most humbly beseech thee, O merciful Father, hear us. And of thy almighty goodness, thou sayest to bless and sanctify with thy word and Holy Spirit these thy gifts and creatures of bread and wine, that we receive them according to thy Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, holy institution, in remembrance of his death and passion, may be partakers of his most blessed body and blood. And we earnestly desire thy fatherly goodness, mercifully to accept this our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, most humbly beseeching thee to grant by the merit and death of thy Son, Jesus Christ, and through faith in his blood, we and all thy whole church may obtain the remission of our sins and all other benefits of his passion. Here we offer and present to thee, O Lord, ourselves, our souls, and bodies, to be a reasonable, holy, living sacrifice unto thee. Humbly beseech in thee that we and all of those who shall be partakers of this holy communion may worthily receive the most precious body and blood of thy Son, Jesus Christ, be filled with thy grace and heavenly benediction, and may one body with him, that he may dwell in us and we in him. And although we are unworthy, there are many bold sins to offer to thee any sacrifice. Yet we seek thee to accept this our proud and duty and service, not weighing our merits, but pardoning our offenses. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. By whom and with whom, in the unity of the Holy Ghost, all honor and glory be unto thee, O Father Almighty, world without end. Amen. And now, with our Savior Christ and all us, we are. Let it be. 
gifts of God for the people of God. Christ forever. 
May God who has brought us out of bondage to sin to true and lasting freedom in the Redeemer bring you to your eternal inheritance. And the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Ghost be upon you and remain with you always. Amen. The Mass is ended. Alleluia, alleluia. Let us go forth in the name of Christ. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Alleluia, alleluia. alleluia.